The video is fake, but what's real is the hate I have for y'all for making me watch this so many times. As you can tell from the soul sapped eyes, those fish are dead and probably being controlled by whoever's recording like a sick corpse puppet. Fish don't move like that and they sure as hell don't bury themselves in the sand outside the water, so they're clearly being manipulated by somebody just outside the camera shot. And after being inside the rotting carcass of two fish, even if that eel was alive, I promise you he'd be dead in all the ways that matter. Also, the guy that posted that video on YouTube also made this, and if you think a satanic fish orgy is real, then I have some beachside property I would love to sell to you. So yeah, the video's fake, everything in it's dead, including me, because witnessing this demonic deep throw killed a part of me that was hanging by a thread for many years. Long story short, clout makes people do unspeakable things, and orchestrating a dead fish hentai scene in the very much 4K is one of them. Now I'm gonna go take out my contacts for the rest of the week, because I've seen more than enough. But why? Why do beavers build dick? So beavers are like a happy meal of bears, cougars, and wolves, so they build lodges to keep from getting eaten. Beavers build dams to block water flow to create ponds. Despite what you might think, beavers don't live in the actual dam. Instead, they build lodges in the middle of the pond and chill there. The lodges have an underwater entrance, but the den is above water. So if a beaver ever gets pressed by like a wolverine or something, having waterside real estate means they can always escape home easily. Also, the beaver lodge is self-heating and keeps the family warm during the winter. And because beavers have been doing this for like 8 million years, now they just do it out of habit. In some places, beavers will build protective bunkers even when there's no predators like bears around. Beavers have such an urge to build dams that just the sound of running water triggers them and they use it as a cue to make repairs on the dam and the lodge. No, I'm like seriously, if you record the sound of running water and then play it on a speaker for a family of beavers, you make them want to build. One scientist actually played the sound of running water on a loudspeaker and the beavers instinctively started building a dam over the speaker. Don't let my lack of emotion fool you, it's the cutest thing I've ever heard. This is how wolves and ravens are slowly becoming best friends. Ravens in Yellowstone will call out to wolves when they find food and then lead the wolf pack to a free meal. In exchange, the ravens take the leftovers the wolves leave behind. There can be up to a hundred ravens waiting for their turn after the wolves. The wolves tear the carcass to shreds and make it easier for the ravens to take their share. But it turns out the ravens are actually starting to form relationships with the wolves, especially the pups. Ravens were seen grabbing sticks and playing tug of war with the young pups and even snapping at their tails to get the pups to playfully chase them. And most of the time, the wolves play along. Ravens are smart enough to remember a face after five years, which is why scientists believe that specific ravens have started bonding with individual wolves in the pack. So not only have wolves and ravens realized that they're better off with each other, they've even started forming emotional attachments, which means there's a chance that if you take food out of the equation, they'd still want to be around each other. I swear there's a Disney movie in here somewhere. So after thousands of years of living around each other, wolves and ravens have learned to tolerate, benefit from, and eventually trust each other. You absolutely love to see it. Arctic fox facts that you definitely need in your life. They actually change colors based on the season. They're Caucasian canines during the winter to help them hide. But come summer, they code switch to brown or gray. When the days get longer, it causes hormonal changes, which causes the color change. Since they live in an air-conditioned hell, the ice fox will use its tail as a blanket to stay warm. Also, being white helps keep them from freezing to death. White fur is hollow, which traps more heat and saves them from becoming a furry popsicle. Since they have the warmest coat in the Arctic, they can survive temperatures as low as negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit. For reference, at negative 18, your exposed skin would freeze in less than 15 minutes. They're basically snow chihuahuas, they're that small. Most of them don't weigh more than 10 pounds, and their tail is a third of their size. Despite their size, they're born with the audacity to steal from, no exaggeration, the biggest predator on the planet. That is an EDP. Tiny foxes will steal food from polar bears, even though the ice bears can easily turn them into a chalk outline with zero hesitation. Sometimes when foxes get really down bad, they'll eat polar bear poop to survive. Since the Arctic fox lives in a refrigerated graveyard, they'll hide emergency food supplies in a bunch of underground pantries. One fox was caught with a snack stash of 38 birds, 4 rabbits, and about a dozen eggs. They mate for life and they're usually monogamous, meaning they only have one partner. They live in Satan's cooler and still find love, yet here you are watching this video alone in bed now, that's tough. But when there's more food in an area, the fox couple will start to sleep around, because like Chris Rock said, you're only as faithful as your options. For future relationship reasons, that was a joke. There's an animal related to a squirrel that can get you murked by a lion. This is an African crested porcupine. As a rodent, it pulls up to the same reunion as capybara, beavers, and rats. And there's about 30,000 reasons why you don't want no smoke with them. Cause when threatened, the porcupine will turn around, run backwards, and then shank you with the quills growing out of its back. If one of the quills gets in your skin, it'll swell up and push deeper until it hits vital organs or arteries. And at that point, you can go ahead and pick what shoes you want in your casket. But don't worry, that's not the worst thing about them. Cause these spike gerbils will run fades with lions and win. A porcupine can cripple a full grown lion to the point where it can't hunt anymore. It's like the lion version of tearing your ACL, just out for the season. So if a lion gets put on a stretcher by a porcupine and can't hunt anymore, they'll get so desperate that they'll start hunting the animal that lives in your mirror. In 1965, one lion hashtagged so many people that it was called the man-eater of Darajani. But there was a reason this lion chose homicide. The lion had gotten so injured by a porcupine that his only option was to hunt and eat humans. Oral of this video, this blade beaver is such a menace that it can get you body bagged by a lion. That is a scientifically accurate sentence and it really shouldn't be. So like, you know hedgehogs and porcupines aren't related, right? Porcupines are rodents, meaning they're cousins with beavers, capybaras, squirrels, and rats. You can tell because they all have the same pair of Timmy Turners. Hedgehogs actually aren't rodents, they're part of a family called- Oh f me.
Hedgehogs are part of the family Erinaceidae, and their closest cousin is this guy you've probably never heard of called a Gymnor. Also called a Moon Rat. But with a face like that, nobody really calls him. And both hedgehogs and Gymnors are closely related to moles and true shrews. And then you have the Echidna, who isn't related to porcupines or hedgehogs. Instead, it's a monotreme, which means Knuckles pulls up to the same family reunion as Perry. And the reason all three look so similar without being related is because this weird thing called convergent evolution. Basically, like you and your boys come up with the same answer to a test and a teacher accuses you of cheating, but each of you came up with it on your own. The spiny duck, the fur cactus, and a blade beaver all came up with similar answers to the test of life. The more you know. Stealing one of the king's sheep was punishable by death penalty according to an old English law in Wales, but the punishment for having ass with one was only 10 years. So in order to avoid the death penalty and just take the 10 years, if a thief was ever caught in the act of stealing a sheep, they would just pull their pants down and say they weren't stealing it, but trying to steal their innocence. And apparently one of the lines a guy caught in the act used was, I'm not a thief, I'm just a pervert. And it actually worked, they were able to Eurostep the death penalty, but they had to live a life with the reputation of being a sheep stuffer. Yeah, that story's not true. Like, at all. Not like, it's 100% cat, but it's one of the foulest fake stories I've ever read, so I just wanted to talk about it. Also, some guy in Wales caught a police officer a sheep f***er and got arrested, so yeah, kind of a soft spot. You know, one of the most messed up things nature ever did was cock block an innocent whale for no reason at all. So the story goes, in 1989, the US Navy picked up on a weird sound vibrating throughout the Pacific Ocean. Definitely wasn't a submarine, and scientists quickly realized that whatever was making that sound was returning to the same spot every year. They realized it was a whale, but this whale was special. This whale was calling out at a frequency of 52 hertz where other whales like the blue whale sing between 10 to 40. Basically, imagine you had a phone with a number that couldn't call or be called by anybody. And since no whale ever called back, scientists believe this was the world's loneliest whale. Technically, blue whales are solitary to begin with, so probably not the loneliest, but definitely the horniest. Since whales like the blue whale and humpback sing the pull females. And since one blue whale wrinkleberry can weigh over 150 pounds, poor guy physically had the worst case of blue balls the world had ever seen. Leading scientists believe this done wrong whale was a result of either having damaged vocalization or being a bluefin hybrid. But some scientists believe he isn't as lonely as we thought because even though he hits notes he has no business hitting, it's possible other whales actually can hear him. But popular opinion says it's 52 hertz booty call has gone unanswered for years, which is why this whale allegedly lives in complete isolation. Long story short, basically the whale got crotch nazi by his own voice. And BTS made a song about it. Because of course they did. Low-key, this would actually make a pretty good movie. And someone actually made it. The Loneliest Whale is in theaters right now, and it'll be on demand July 16th. Check it out if you want to learn more about the whale nature decided would die a virgin. Cause getting over is the closest he'll ever get.